In this video, I want to show you how to smooth skin without using the case using focus separation. It doesn't have to be difficult, so pay close attention because after this video, we are going to master how to smooth skin using focus separation. So once we bring our image to Photoshop, the first thing we are going to do, we are going to duplicate our balance layer twice by pressing our Command J, Command J twice. Now the reason I'm doing this is because we want to separate the textures from the color so that we can work on the blemishes separately and smooth the skin separately without affecting the blemishes. So after duplicating our layer twice, I'm going to rename this layer one low frequency or color and this upper layer high frequency or textures. So this texture layer is going to be where our texture is going to be, while this low layer is going to be where our color is going to be. And after you've created and renamed your post layers, we are going to turn off this high layer first because we want to subtract the texture from the color layer. So with this low frequency or color layer selected, come to filter, come to blur, and click on Gaussian blur right here. Now for this blur radius, it's very, very important. It depends on the amount of textures you want to keep on your image or how smooth you want your image to be rather. So if you want your image to be smooth, use a low blur radius like, like six or seven or eight, and this image is going to be really smooth. Or if you want to go even smoother like plastic, you can use five or three. But I am not advise to do that. But if you still want to keep texture on your image, use a high blur radius between 10 to 15 or 20 for this type of image. But I'm going to use 12 for this image. But if I'm retouching a full body image, I use the radius between 2 and 3. While if I'm retouching a portrait image like this, I use between 6 or 7 or 5 for a portrait like this. Okay? Now for headshot like this or beauty image, I'm going to use the radius of 12 and hit OK. Now once I use 12, if I zoom in, you can see the textures are no longer on the image. You have only the colors. So if I just turn on my texture layer now, you can see the texture are back on. Now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to remove the colors from this texture layer. Now to do that, so my high texture layer selected, I'm going to come to image, come to apply image. Once I click on apply image, now since I want to subtract the color, I'm going to come to my blending mode, change from multiply to subtract. All right, now once I change to subtract, I want to select the layer which the colors are to subtract it from. So I come to my layer that is on merge, click on it, and just select the color or the low frequency. All right, because that's where we want to subtract. All right, and for your opacity, make sure it's 100%. For your scale, make sure it's on 2. And your offset, 128. And click on OK. And for me, what we want to do, we're going to change the blend mode from normal to linear light. Once you're into linear light, you can see we bring back the textures. So if I just turn off my color layer, you can see we have only the textures. And if I turn off my texture layer, you can see we have only the colors. Now for me, what I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate this texture layer by pressing on Command J. After duplicating it, I want to hold Option or Alternate, and this clipping icon is going to show. And I'm just going to clip it to this high texture layer like this. After I clip this high texture copy to this high texture, I want to select the high texture copy. Change the blend modes to normal. All right. Now the next thing I'm going to do, I want to create a new empty layer so you can work more destructively. So if you make any mistake, you can actually erase the mistake instead of deleting the whole focus separation and start all over from scratch. So to do that, with this low focus layer selected, I'm just going to create a new empty layer above the low focus. Layer. This is where I'm going to be brushing on. So I can just name this layer brush here because this is where I'm going to be brushing on. And what I'm going to do from here, I'm just going to select this high focus texture copy. Hold shift and click on this low frequency colors and tones and just press up command G or control G to group everything. And I can rename this layer frequency separation like this. Now that we finish creating our frequency separation, it's time to actually remove the blemishes and smooth out the skin. Also, if you don't want to spend more time creating this frequency separation all over a GIF or all the image you want to edit, I have an action for it. So if I just click this action, it's just going to load frequency separation for me. And if you want that action for free, I'll be leaving it in the show below of this video so you can download it and get it for free. So instead of doing focus separation from scratch for every image you want to edit, you can just play that action and just going to do it for you. All right. So we have the same thing inside the action. So to move the blemishes from our image, we are going to be working on this high texture copy. Remember, our blemishes are textures. So if you want to remove blemishes, we are going to be working on this high texture copy right here, which is this first layer right there. Now to move blemishes from your image, you can pick the spot ceiling brush tool or you can use the close tab tool. Now if you want to use the spot ceiling brush tool, once you select it, make sure sample layer is not selected. If sample layer is selected and you try to remove any blemishes from your image, 
you can see what's going to happen it's just going to make that place look rough and bad instead make sure sample layer is not selected and just paint on the blemishes you want to remove and just going to remove it for you just like that okay so you can see now what i like to do is to use the close thumb tool to actually remove blemishes for my image now this is how you use the close thumb tool which is what i use personally to remove blemishes for my image i'm going to select the close thumb tool once i select the close thumb tool make sure current layer is selected and not current and below just current layer opacity set 100 flow set 100 just hold option or alternate to sample from the close by area and just paint over any blemishes you want to remove just like that to remove blemishes from the image so paint over any blemishes you want to remove see the before and the after the before and the after so just do this for the whole of this image if you want to remove the blemishes from the image also make sure you are increasing and decreasing your brush size according to the blemishes you want to remove so if i want to remove a big blemishes i'm going to increase my brush size and if i want to remove a small blemishes i'm going to decrease my brush size and that's what i want you to know and pay close attention to if you look at this image you can see the blemishes are really really many so when removing blemishes make sure you take your time to do it this is the most important part of photo touching removing blemishes if you don't take your time to remove blemishes, the image is not going to look really good. So take your time to remove blemishes. So I'll be switching between the close thumb tool and the spot ceiling brush tool just to remove blemishes from this image. Okay. So alternate to sample and also the square bucket key to increase and decrease your brush size according to the blemishes you want to remove. Okay. So I'm just going to remove the blemishes from this image. All right. So let's see the before and after. See the before and the after. The before and the after. And don't worry about these patches right here. We're just going to fix them when using our mixer brush tool to smooth out the skin when we're mixing the colors. All right. And after removing blemishes, the only thing that's remaining is to smooth out the skin. And we're going to be doing that with the mixer brush tool. Now to do that, I'm going to select my mixer brush tool. Once I select my mixer brush tool, this is my settings. Make sure I'm using a clean brush. All right. Also make sure clean brush after a stroke is selected. My weight is on 30. My load is on 30. My mix is on zero, my flow is on 20, and sample layer is selected. Now, the reason why sample layer is selected is because I'm going to be brushing on this brush layer, which is that empty layer. But if I was to be working directly on this flow frequency, I would have unchecked this sample all layer. I would have just worked directly on this flow frequency without checking this sample layer. But since I want to work on this brush layer, that's why I sample all layer. And if you are wondering why I'm working on that empty layer, let me show you why. Let me show you what will happen. So if I just brush right now, for example, and I make a mistake like this. So let's say I make this mistake, see the before and the after. Since I'm working on this brush layer, which is an empty layer, I can just pick my eraser tool. Once I pick my eraser tool, I can just erase that mistake from that particular place instead of deleting the whole focus separation and starting all over from scratch. So that's why I prefer to work with this brush layer, which is an empty layer. Okay, so once I select my mixer brush tool back, I'm just going to turn off my high frequency layer to brush. Make sure your high texture layer is selected. So once you turn it off, you are going to see we have only the colors now on our image. I'm going to increase my brush size according to the parts I'm working on. So if I want to brush, I'm increasing and decreasing my brush size according to the part of the image I'm working on. And I'm brushing on the highlight separately and the shadows separately. So let me just show you that, for example, if I want to brush, let me pick my normal brush tool. If I want to brush, I'm going to brush in on this shadow part right here separately. And I'm going to be using a brush size that actually fits this place to brush separately like this. While if I want to work on the highlight, this highlight right here on the forehead, I'm going to brush in on this separately. And I'm going to be using a big brush that actually fits that highlight right there and just brush on that particular highlight just to shape how light falls into the image. So what I want to do, we don't want to brush highlights into shadows and shadows into highlights because if we do that it's just going to make the image look flat and it's not going to make the image look good so we still want to keep the shape of the face that's why you have to be careful not to brush highlights into shadows and shadows into highlights so i'm only going to brush right now i'm going to pick my mixer brush tool turn off my high texture layer decrease my brush size a little bit zoom in a little bit like this okay and just paint on this part of the forehead remember we're just mixing the color so I'm going to mix the color right there just to make the image look smooth. Okay, so that's for the highlights. Now I'm going to come to the shadow part. 
I'm going to mix the colors on the shadow part like this. Now for the transition, I'm going to increase my boy size a little bit and just paint on the transition like so. So I'll do the same thing for this side. I'm going to brush on this part. So just increase and decrease your boy size according to the areas of the image you're working on. So you can see how I am just decreasing and increasing my brush size, okay? Also, I want to paint on this part like this and also brush on these parts right here. So make sure you are increasing and decreasing your brush size according to the parts of the image you are working on. Let me just show you the before and after what I've done so far so you can see. So, see the before and the after. The before and the after. And right here, I feel I made a mistake right here. So I'm going to pick my eraser tool and just erase this particular place. Okay, once I erase that particular place, take my mixer brush tool again, add my highest layer, and just carefully brush on this particular place. But I don't want to paint highlight into shadows and shadows into highlights. All right, so let's see the before and after now. See the before and the after. You can see if I zoom in, we still have the texture on the image, and the image is looking really, really good. See the before and the after. We're still going to remove more of the blemishes. Like I said, blemishes remover is very, very important. But I just smooth the skin first. So I'm going to hide my high texture layer again. Take my missile brush too. This time, paint on the cheek. Remember, increase and decrease your brush size according to the part of the image you're working on. Just paint on it. Remember, I told you about those uh, patches. That's why I'm going to fix them when mixing the colors. Let me just quickly show you the before and after of those patches right there. So you can see. Now you can see those patches are no longer there. See the before and the after. The before and the after. And the after so i told you i'm going to fix it so i'm just going to continue doing this for the whole of this image just paint on the highlight separately the shadow separately just to make the image look really really smooth okay so we are done let's see the before and after see the before full crest separation and after full crest separation the before and the after now if i zoom in on this image you can see we still have some blemishes on the image now we're just going to remove them to remove them, remember, hit your close stamp tool, decrease your brush size, press option or alternate to sample from the close by area, and just paint over the blemishes you still want to remove from your image. All right? So, just do that for the whole of the blemishes, and you are good to go. Now, you can see this image is looking good and will really have textures on the image. All right? Now, let's repeat the before and after again. So where we started from, our original image, and after, our before, and after. So this is how you can smooth your image without losing details using focus suppression. And one thing I want you to notice that, which is very important, is when doing this, make sure you take your time to remove blemishes from your image. I'll keep saying that. And also, if you want to retain more textures on your image or more details on your image, use a high blur reduce. While if you want your image to be smooth, because you might feel this image is looking, the texture of this image is looking too much. If you want it to be really smooth, use a low blur radius. That's one thing I want you to know. And if you want to learn how to retouch studio pictures, studio portraits from start to finish, you can check out this video right here. I'll see you guys in my next one. Stay crazy.